Hi, it's Technomaster here, and today I will be showing you how to do an SQL attack. So, firstly, we go onto a site that is um, SQL vulnerable, and I have this site set up by Crash Overrun, who must get all the credit for the site. Um, the site is on my local host, but um, you guys can download it from Security Override. Here's the address here. Here's the URL here. SecurityOverride.com, Infusions, Pro Download, Pro under slash download under slash panel forward slash download dot PHP, um, question mark, DID equals 33. Or you can just search, go to downloads and search for vulnerable. So yeah, just close this magnifier. Okay, so there's the site. Um, probably easier if I do this. There's the site there. Okay. Um, yeah. Don't save. Okay, so. Um, first, we have to find an SQL vulnerable. First, we have to find the tables. We have table name members, and we have a page name product. If you look over here, you can see an ID for the table name products. Members, you can see an ID if you click on the names, but um, it doesn't really do much. Okay, so um, yeah, it just shows us name, avatar, the link on this one's broken, interests, and email. Um, name, avatar, in interests, and email. Yeah, okay. Products, name, there should be a picture there, and description. Very important thing to note is this pre is the previous and the next button. If you look up at the URL, clicking next allows me to change, increment the ID by one, where previous allows me to decrement, decrement. Okay, basically type in whatever number you want here, and although there's no files there, it will just keep on increasing big problem in as as the developer that is a huge problem okay so the first thing we got to do is determine if there is a vulnerability to do that we start by typing adding a logical statement at the end of the URL so and one equals one double dash um, all SQL statements must end with double dash we enter that and as you see the page appears as it was Next, we must add an illogical statement at the end. And run that. So you see the page has now changed. Proves there's a vulnerability because it shows when we want it to do and doesn't when we want. The way it works is one is always equal to one. One will never be equal to zero. You can have it as whatever as long as one doesn't equal the answer. And to check if it does, as long as one equals whatever the answer is. Okay. Next step is to check how many columns there are. To do this we use the order by command. Um, order by basically you type in a number and you, you order by you use the nth number and you keep incrementing the nth number until you get an error. So as you see order by one, no error. We add another one. Order by two, no error. What about three? No error. What about four? No error. What about five? Suddenly we have an error. So what we do is you take the one before the error I mean, is the last column. So therefore five minus one, we've determined there are four columns. Um, yeah, there can be many number of columns. So basically, if you're not sure, start by a large number get the error. Drop it in half. But still get the error. Cut it in half again. Still get the error. Basically just keep doing that until you've gone too far until you've gone to about then. If you keep getting the error just keep cutting it in half until you find closer numbers. Um, this one will when you get to about 15 you want to start dropping about, about 5. So you go to 10 and then we'll go to 
5, and once you've gone to 5, you might as well start going singles. And we'll determine it's 4. Okay, so now we know there are 4 columns. Next, what we do is we change the ID equals to negative 1 purely because there's no dot to negative 1, as you can see. So, um, negative 1, union, all, s sorry, the union all selected one doesn't work here because we want to select specific files, not all of them. Uh, we need to specify specific column na column rows. Um, not all of them. Um, you'll see why shortly. Um, yeah, some sites don't allow you to just put um, spaces. The URL won't accept them, so you can put pluses in between, like this. And just select plus, but um, I don't need to do that because this has me set up like that. So I'm just going to do it normally. Union select 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. You have to do all the column names, all the column numbers. Um, so if there's 10, you go 1 to 10. Um, that's very important for the next few steps. Then we go from information schema, um, which is the master control for MySQL. Just by the way, this is a MySQL database, MySQL, whatever you call it. Dot tables just tells the master key that master control that we are using the table section, and of course your double dash push enter. You'll now notice two numbers on the screen, two and three. Those numbers are the only numbers you may. Um, edit on the page on uh, substitute. Here we're going to use 2 just because it happens to be the first number and yeah. So we substitute 2 for table name. Um, now you'll, as you notice, we'll get a whole bunch of table names. Um, these top sets are all computerized, computerized, computerized. Um, human, human. You'll be able to generally work out which are human tables, which aren't. Just to show you them in the SQL database themselves, they are here under the my database database. There's products. Um, there's the product table. There's the user table. Um, obviously, in a real life situation, you don't have access to these tables, so we hack them. But basically, this is what you're looking at. If we just go here. Um just click on my database. Um yeah, products and users, those are the tables I built. Um Okay. So next sorry, um we have users and products. Next thing we need to do is display the column names. So we now substitute table name for column name. Oh and um just note Obviously, products is for products. Users is generally going to be where users are stored, and most likely passwords, emails, logins, all that important information. So, we put column name here, and we change information schema dot tables to information schema dot columns. For obvious reasons, we are switching from column from table to column, and therefore information schema need to know that. We run that. As you'll see now, we get a whole bunch of column names problem though is it's the wrong table name as you'll see here um, we have got the open information schema because that's what we selected and you'll notice now here's what the table names we have opened that table so we have all these column names which is not what we want so basically we need to change the table name um, to do that, you add the WHERE clause. The WHERE clause basically just tells the information schema that which file precisely we want to drag from, or pull information from. So we go, um, it, columns WHERE table um, name equals users in single quotes. 
enter. Um, as you'll see now, we have our table name, uh, our correct table with ID, name, user, name, password, name, avatar, name, interest. Name's only there because it happens to be the first thing in the column. Um, where it's set up, but user is your username, password is your password, avatar is your avatar, interest is your interest, and email, etc. Three is just because we didn't use it, it's still staying there. Um, just quickly here, one problem with this method is that um, some sites have magic code set up, which will don't, which will basically say, um, yeah, most sites have magic quote set up, so um, you won't be able to do the single quote thing. What you do there is you go use the char command. It's basically just char two brackets. I'll open it up here to show you what exactly what I'm doing. You go char, open in there. Then you take any sort of text to ASCII online text to ASCII converter. Um, make your own, whatever and you just have to convert the string to ASCII um, if you see here we put in users there's the string there in ASCII value uh, coming back to the site we would there are CSV files so you put them in CSV comma separated values no spaces uh, and basically this is user in ASCII which will allow the, the browser will then run this as there's no quotes. You'll get the same thing here. Um, we just add that onto the end here. V, um, double dash, and if we enter it, we'll get the same thing as the table hasn't changed. But that's just the way to do it. I'm going to change this back to users because don't need that over there. Okay. Um, now, I'm gonna for the next step. I'm gonna show you first the short way and then the long way, um, just so you understand exactly what's going on. We need to extract the data from users and the data from password. Uh, that way, we get username and password. You can do it with email interest, but just because the site only uses um, username and password, uh, we're just gonna use. We're just gonna show you username and password. So, firstly, we have to say we have to substitute column name for an actual column name. Just remember user and pause. So it's user. You take away information schema as the database already knows we're pulling from information schema. Confirm the tables and you remove the quotes. They are no longer needed. Run that and you'll see there's the usernames Lemuel, Bob, Mary, Luke, Tom, Jerry. Right, remember these, and we go into the next step. Now you need to go into the next one. So, if you go back, you remember it's user and pause. Substitute user for pause. Give you access to all the passwords. Passwords Lemuel, password, password, password backwards, password, whatever. So, you remember the two. Um, if you remember, it was Bob and password. So we can log in with Bob's details and password. We're logged in. Welcome, Bob. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna go back to this because I'm lazy to type it all in again. The next thing we can do, which makes things easier, is we can substitute column name using the concat function. I just want to close all this so I don't have to do it later. Um, from users and we just take away the quotes. We can use the concat function. The concat function basically allows you to make multiple requests per line. So you just type in concat, it's a function, and I will show you what we're doing here. Concat, we have it, the function. The concat function, as I say, allows you to add in multiple. So we type in user, comma, no spaces, ox3a, um, that's basically just colon in hex. Um, we need to do it in hex, same reason we had to do the um, magic quotes. Same reason the browser won't understand a colon. This can be any separated value. You can make that uh, the code for common or separated by commas. Anything. This will basically give us this combination. User, colon, password. Um, if you change that to comma, 
this will obviously be a comma, you can change it to a space, a dash, whatever, just get the x value and put it in there. Uh, as I say, you can do this too, for email, um, you just go email, yeah, but for now, just for this tutorial, we're just going to use concat user colon pass copy, uh, we paste that here, uh, I'm just going to put my comma back, delete that bracket, v, concat user, it's colon pass, we run that, you get lemuel lemuel, bob password, Mary password backwards. So, as we've seen, we get the two past usernames. Uh, we can log in with Bob, we can log in with Lemmy or whatever. Log in. Um, Lemmy and you enter in and welcome Lemmy. So, that was the video on SQL attacks. Um, just to brush through. Concat command. User. Um, basically column name one um, this is the hex value for um, um, colon and this is basically column name two um, o x three a equals n hex next we went over the char command char command um converts ascii to text um yeah um the links to the site I'll put up again is I'll also put it in the video description there's the link to the website to download this panel. You just follow the readme file, download the files, build the SQL, and you've got your database. You've got your SQL up. It's a brilliant site to do. Again, I must thank Crash Overon for the site. Um, by the way, this error over here, don't worry about it. I just haven't set up my time zone correctly. And this error over here as well, you don't need to worry about it. It may or may show up on yours, depending on how much time you sent put in it. And yeah, that's the tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, whatever, please feel free to comment on my blog. Um, my blog, HTTP. Te I didn't delete that for some reason. Techno Monster. Techno Monster Hacking. Dot blog spot dot com. Thanks guys. Um This is Technomaster. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Peace out. Catch you again. Um follow the blog for more tutorials, more videos like this, more podcasts. See you.